When it comes to rhythm games, my absolute favorite has to be Rhythm Heaven Fever for the Nintendo Wii. The entire franchise just has this level of positivity that comes from not only the music, but the art direction as well, that is unmatched from any other rhythm game I've ever played. I'm a big fan of pretty much every game in the series, but Rhythm Heaven Fever was my first, and still to this day is my favorite. And to show my appreciation for the game, I thought it would be fun to go through the entire game and rank every single song. But to make it a little bit more interesting and to give it more of a Rhythm Heaven twist, I thought it would be fun to rank them based on the rankings that you get at the end of every song. So at the bottom of the tier list, we have Try Again. Above that is Just Okay. Above that is Superb. And finally, at the very top, the best of the games are perfect. We're just gonna go one by one from the track order of what you unlock them. I'm not gonna do anything fancy, just gonna go through and give my opinions on each of the games. Should be fun. Alright, and the very first game that we're gonna rank is Hole in One. And wow, is this a strong start for the game. Hole in One is so much fun. The gameplay is simple, but the art direction and the music are amazing. I love the monkey, I love the mandrill, and I love that when you start to get into the groove, the water starts shooting up. It just makes you feel so good and just really gets you into the flow of the game, which makes for a perfect introductory game. Maybe jumping the gun a little bit, but I'm gonna give Hole in One a perfect rating. So next we have Screwbot Factory. And again, this is a really solid game right off the bat. I love the robots, I love how they go, let's go, and oh yeah! It's, it's so great. Every single person that I've shown this game to, the second that they hear that, they immediately copy it. And I know it sounds silly, but it is such an intuitive design to have those robots say that because it makes you look forward to getting the notes done correctly so you can hear the oh yeah and it works really well so i'm gonna give screwbot factory a superb and right after that is seesaw seesaw is a little bit less great in my opinion it's definitely not a bad game i quite enjoy seesaw this one's also got a lot of personality this one also feels really good to play whenever you land those notes and the big poof balls go flying everywhere it feels really good to to get the rhythm down but the music isn't that memorable and the gameplay isn't that engaging so i'm gonna give this one just okay Oh man, now we got Double Date, and Double Date, in my opinion, is one of the best games that Rhythm Heaven Fever has to offer. I love the themes, I love the design, I love the music, I love the gameplay. This game is so much fun. It makes me want to perfect it every single time that I get the opportunity to. So because of that, I'm giving Double Date a perfect. Alright, so now we've gone through the first category and we have our first remix. In my opinion, this remix is very good at getting you introduced to the idea of remixes and it uses all of the songs from the previous category really effectively. I think this song does a really good job at easing you into the fast-paced, changing up nature that remixes are going to occur. So because of that, I'd give this one a superb. Alright, now we're in the second column of games, and we're starting off with Forklifter. I remember Forklifter being one of the games that I saw and immediately made me want to play it. I thought that the concept was so funny and just looked like so much fun to play. And it is! The gameplay is a ton of fun, the music is really catchy, and I love the theme, I love the design. It's a great game. Plus, I love at the very end how you can make a little hamburger. That is just so, so good. So I'm going to give Forklifter a superb. So next up we have Tambourine. And I'll be honest, I'm not too big of a fan of Tambourine. I really love the games with monkeys. I think the monkey is so cute. And the idea of a little monkey playing a tambourine is adorable. But unfortunately, the gameplay here kind of falls flat for me, as well as the music. It just doesn't work as well as I would like it to. So I'm going to give this one just okay. So right after this we have Board Meeting, again a pretty underwhelming game in my opinion. I don't really think that much here is very memorable. 
I think the pigs are funny, and the idea of a bunch of them spinning around on their office chairs and stopping is a really well done design, but in execution, the gameplay isn't that great, the music isn't that fun, and overall, it's just a kind of forgettable game, so I'm going to also give this one just okay. <sighs> oh man. Monkey Watch. Monkey Watch, in my opinion, is one of the worst games in Rhythm Heaven Fever. Get him out okay, of okay, here. hear me out. Get out. Monkey Watch is a game that requires you to keep a constant tempo going for the entire song and throws in these weird offbeats to throw you off halfway through. Now, it doesn't sound that bad. There are plenty of games in the Rhythm Heaven franchise that make you keep up a constant beat but there's something about how it's implemented with the purple monkeys that just doesn't click. And I don't think it's just with me. Whenever I see somebody playing it for the first time, Monkey Watch is always, always the game that they struggle on at first. And a lot of the time, it's what turns them off from the game. I think that the design is cute. I love the idea of tiny monkeys in a watch. That is so cute. But the gameplay, and the music just don't mesh well for me. I think that maybe if this showed up a little bit later in the game, it would be a just okay. But because this is the second column of games and it is such a noob killer, I have to give this one a try again. I think maybe the music needs to be a little bit different. Maybe the offbeats just need to be a little different. I'm not sure, but there's something about this song that I just do not like. So I'm giving Monkey Watch try again. And following one of the worst games in Rhythm Heaven Fever, we have one of the worst remixes in Rhythm Heaven Fever. There's nothing too egregious about this remix. It's not like the game is hard, it's not like it sucks, the music isn't bad, but this remix comes in at just over a minute long, it's really short, and there's nothing too interesting about the theme that it sets up. There's a purple art style here going on, but unlike the first remix that had this fun tropical vibe, it just falls really flat for me. So I'm going to give Remix 2 try again as well. Alright, column 3, starting off with Working Dough. Working Dough is a game that I'm not too fond of either. It's a very simple repeat the sounds that you just heard game with a little bit of interesting gameplay mixed in with the the uh, bigger balls versus the smaller ones. But uh, it's still fun. I like the theme a lot. I like the design. The music is good. But again, it's just kind of forgettable. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. This one is just okay. Oh man, alright, now we got Built to Scale, and in my opinion, this is the worst iteration of Built to Scale in the entire franchise. And it's gone through multiple different iterations throughout its lifetime. In my opinion, the best version of it is from the DS game. But in this one, it's not that great. There's something about how it's the same rhythm every single time over and over again that just really gets me. The song is not good. However, the gameplay itself is very satisfying. I quite enjoy it. So I don't want to be too harsh, so I'm going to give this one just okay. So you know how I said that Monkey Watch was the noob killer? Well. Air Rally is the real noob killer. If you struggle during Monkey Watch, it's very likely that you're going to struggle during Air Rally as well. And I'm not sure exactly what it is, but this game is pretty hard if you're just starting out. However, I absolutely love Air Rally once you get used to it. I love how high energy the game is, I love the music, everything about it is so much fun. So this game is fun, it's super memorable, I love hearing ba bum 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 and I love when he goes far away and starts screaming. It's just so much fun, it's so satisfying to play once you get to know the mechanics. So I'm going to give Air Rally a superb. Next up we got Figure Fighter, and this again was one of the first games that I saw in Rhythm Heaven Fever that made me really want to play the game. I love the design here, I love the gameplay, I love how cinematic everything is with the narrator telling you what to do and punch and whenever you start to get going everybody starts cheering for you and the lights start to flash. I think it's so much fun. I'm going to give Figure Fighter a superb. 
Next up is Remix 3, and in my opinion this is one of the strongest remixes that the game has to offer. This is the first remix in Rhythm Heaven Fever that incorporates lyrics into the music, and I think it is done so well. I love how this song uses all the other songs from the category, I think it's done super well, I love the music, I love the theme, the kitchen setting is really really fun, so I'm gonna give Remix 3 a superb as well. Moving on to column 4, we have a heavy hitter with Ringside. And Ringside might just be one of the best games that the franchise has ever put out. Might just be the most iconic Rhythm Heaven game ever. So many people know this game. It is so much fun. I love the energy. I love how silly it is. The wubba dubba dubba is that true? Is so iconic to the Rhythm Heaven franchise. Yeah, the gameplay is tons of fun. It feels really good to pose for the fans. I absolutely love Ringside. This is, again, one of my favorites in the entire franchise, so I have to give Ringside a perfect. Following up ringside, however, is not one of my favorites. We have Packing Pests. Packing Pests is definitely not a bad game here, but again, it kind of just falls into that category of the gameplay feels very samey, the music isn't too engaging, and it's a little bit forgettable despite its immense role in the final remix. So I'm going to give Packing Pests a just okay. Next up we have Micro Row. Like Monkey Watch, Micro Row is a game where you have to keep up a constant tempo throughout the entire song. But unlike Monkey Watch, I think that the gameplay here is a lot more intuitive. The music works really well with it, and the audio signals make a lot more sense for the, the rhythm. I really like the colors that start to show up once you get going into the game. I love the trail that they leave behind, the other little microbes. It is a very good game and one of my favorites. So I'm going to give Micro Row a superb rating. Okay, next up we have Samurai Slice. Samurai Slice is a really weird game for me because I love the gameplay, I love the theme, I love the design, I love the art, but whenever it comes to replaying the game, it's one of those games where I just don't ever want to play the original because of the second version, and we'll get into that later. But this version just feels a little bit slower. This one is really tough for me. I'm... I want to give it a superb, but it is just right on the cusp of being just a little bit too simple for my liking. It's, it's just a slow game, so I'm going to give it a just okay, but it's at the very top of just okay. It is almost superb. So now we got Remix 4. And Remix 4 is really strong in my opinion. One of the best themes for any remix in the entire game. I love the Japanese theme, all the Sakura petals everywhere. It's really fun. I love the intro about the samurai. And I really enjoy how they incorporated all the other songs into the gameplay with the music. It works really well and one of the most fun in the entire game. So I'm going to give Remix 4 a superb. Starting off column 5, we have Catch of the Day, and as much as I love fishing games, this one falls a little short for me. I don't think that the rhythm is intuitive at all. It's not very satisfying, and the music itself is pretty dull, so as much as it hurts me, I have to give Catch of the Day a try again. But following Catch of the Day, we have Flipper Flop. And in my opinion, Flipper Flop is just, I'll say it now, it's perfect. I love the design. I love those cute little seals. They're so cute. I love the Eskimo who's giving you orders. He's so happy when you get the rhythm on time. The rhythm just feels great. It's so satisfying. Everything about this game makes me so happy. And it is such a blast to play. I Love Flipper Flop. Flipper Flop gets a perfect. After Flipper Flop is Exhibition Match. And while this game is pretty fun, it's very satisfying to hit the balls. I think that, uh, again, it's just forgettable. The music isn't there. It's just samey. You do the same rhythm every single time. 
it's very slow so while it does feel good to hit the balls the rhythm itself is just not satisfying it's very satisfying to hit the balls and it's unfortunate though because i love baseball they did a much better baseball game on the Game Boy with Rhythm Tengoku. I can't remember what that one is called, but you're like a little alien dude hitting a baseball. And that's tons of fun. It's very quick, very responsive. But this one is just slow, waiting for the beat every single time. And it does that cool thing where it zooms out really far and then crashes into the screen. That's one of the coolest things in the game. I absolutely love that. But the rest of the game is just pretty boring. So I'm going to also give Exhibition Match a try again. But following that, we have another banger of a game. This one comes close to being my favorite in the entire franchise and is definitely my absolute favorite in the entire game of Rhythm Heaven Fever. I love Flock Step. This one is another game where you have to keep up a constant rhythm, but it feels pretty good. It feels simple to keep it going, and it really expects you to just get into the rhythm of things, and it does super easily and intuitively. It's not just constant marching. There's little bits in between to change up the gameplay where you have to flap your wings. It feels so good, and I just love the Hubert's of happiness. They make me so happy. Make me so happy that I made a painting of them because they're so pretty. This game is so visually impressive. The song is fun. I love the gameplay. Everything about this is perfect. And the part where it zooms out to the earth and then back through your eye is just so funny and I love it. Every single time it happens, I just laugh. I love this game so much. So while there's some really good ones here and some really bad ones, Remix 5 just does not work for me. I don't like the theme, the caveman setting is a little weird, and it just doesn't know how to incorporate all of the games. It's very heavily focused on catch of the day. In my opinion, this is probably one of the worst remixes in the game, right next to Remix 2. I'm not a fan of this one, so I'm going to give Remix 5 a try again. Alright, Launch Party. Launch Party is a lot of fun. I really like the gameplay here, I like the music, I like the setting, I like the themes. It's really solid, but just something that I don't ever really want to go back and play. Whenever I do a new playthrough of the game, I'm very happy to play this one, but whenever I'm done and get a superb and then a perfect, I very rarely want to go back and play this one. So I'm gonna give Launch Party a just okay. After Launch Party, we have Donk Donk, and Donk Donk is one of the strangest games in the franchise, and the game knows that. In the description beforehand, it literally just does not know what to call it and just says, well, just play the game and you'll figure it out. And for a rhythm game, I don't think that that's very good. It's wacky, it's silly, but it's just not intuitive. And switching between the two beats just doesn't feel good in my opinion. It's not very satisfying and the music isn't great. So I'm going to give Donk Donk a try again. Next up, we have Bossa Nova. And I quite like this game. Most of the music in Rhythm Heaven Fever has this very high energy, poppy vibe to it, but Bossa Nova really slows things down and it, it gets you into an entirely different rhythm that really isn't explored anywhere else in the entire game. I really like the themes, I love the art, I love switching between the two rhythms, and it feels really good. This one, I know I've said a lot of games feel samey in their rhythm, and this one does as well, but it does it in a really good way in my opinion. This one just feels different from all the other ones. Switching between the two, it feels good. It's very satisfying, relaxing, and I love it. So I'm going to give Bossa Nova a superb. Next up we have Love Rap, and I have a lot to say about Love Rap. In my opinion, Love Rap is the worst game in the entire franchise. And that pretty much only applies to the English version of Love Rap. If I were playing the Japanese version of the game, I would probably give Love Rap a high just okay. The gameplay just boils down to pressing A whenever MC Adore finishes what she's saying, and that doesn't really work very well in my opinion. I respect that they were going for like a hip hop rap kind of vibe, something a little bit different, but it just doesn't really work here. And again, with the English version of the game, the voice actors that they got to play your character are terrible. For some reason, 
they decided to make the voice actor for your character have this horrible, high-pitched, off-tone voice, and it's just terrible. He takes over the entire song whenever you hear him rap. It is awful. I do not like this game at all. I really want to because like I said, the Japanese version is really good. If they allowed us to switch between English and Japanese like the European version of the game does, I would probably be a little bit more lenient here. But when it comes to the North American release of this game, you are you can only play in English. So I just do not find any redeeming qualities in the English version of Love Rap. And honestly, I'm putting this below Try Again. This is the Shadow Realm. Fuck Love Rap. Nothing can save you now. It's over. <gasps> you dueled me and lost. And now you must all wander the Shadow Realm until I choose to set you free. <laughs> So next up we have Remix 6, and this one is okay. I really like the music, the theme is fun, but nothing is too impressive about this one. It's kind of forgettable. It's a good time when you're going through the game. I don't think it's bad at all, but it's just kind of one of those remixes that falls in the background. So I'm going to give Remix 6 a just okay. Starting it off we have Tap Troop. Tap Trope? Tap Trope. Trope? Troop? Trope. Tap Troop. Tap, Tap Troop. I really like this one. It's very funny. It's very fun. The music is good. It is very satisfying to get into the rhythm. Once you start getting the okay, then it just feels really, really good. The popper starts to go off. Uh, the themes here are fantastic. I love the energy. I love the very end whenever it zooms out and it shows that all of their legs are just super long. That's tons of fun. Uh, but the gameplay is a little bit challenging. It's not bad in that way, but it can definitely mess you up uh, when you go into the offbeat. So I like this one a lot, but I don't ever really go back and play it. So I'm going to give it a just okay. Next up, we have Shrimp Shuffle. And I was very surprised to find that a lot of people don't like Shrimp Shuffle. But for me, I absolutely love it. I love these little shrimp dudes. They're so cute. And the rhythm here is really fun. I love the pauses in the rhythm especially. It really mixes things up. And once you start to get into the rhythm, the music starts to go. It feels really good. It's really fun, really bright and lively. And I really, really enjoy it. So I'm going to give Shrimp Shuffle a superb. And following Shrimp Shuffle, we have another great game, Cheer Readers. Everything about this game works in its favor. I love the design, I love the characters, I love the music, I love the gameplay. This is probably one of the best examples of satisfying gameplay where you really start to want to hear the beats that play after you hit the note. For example, once you successfully hit the let's go read a bunch of books, everyone goes yay! And that feels really good. You start to hear that before you even hit it. So it makes hitting that last note a lot easier and a lot more satisfying. So I really like cheerleaders. I love all the, the different girls. They're so cute. They're all wearing their glasses. I, I love it. Cheerleaders is a superb. All right, and the last game before Remix 7 is Karate Man. And I really respect the idea that Karate Man is the last original song. If you don't know, Karate Man has been a game in the franchise ever since the GBA, and it's actually the very first game that you play on the Game Boy version. So I really like seeing it here. This is probably my favorite iteration of Karate Man gameplay-wise. I really like the DS one too, but this one just feels really good, and the music is a ton of fun. It's, I think, the only game that has lyrics that's not a remix. So that's really impressive. I love that. I love how it feels, the gameplay is really fun, so I'm going to give Karate Man a superb. And finally, we have Remix 7. I love Remix 7. The, the feeling that you get here, it feels so 
exclusive in a way. I love all the colors. The white and the purple and the yellow, they work really well together. They give it a very luxurious feeling. And it feels really good to have gotten this far. Like, wow, I've really done a lot here. This feels great. The songs are incorporated very well into the gameplay of the remix. And the music here is super different. It's kind of like, it's, it's got these crazy notes that are going on, but it still manages to stay to, to stay within the realm of every song that is going on. This game is, this one is pretty difficult. I think this was probably the remix that I had the most trouble on, but overall, super fun. Love the feeling, love the gameplay, love the music. I'm giving Remix 7 a perfect. And since after this, technically the credits roll and you play Nightwalk, let's just go ahead and rank Nightwalk because Nightwalk is very, very special to me. Going back to what I said about this game series just being so positive, Nightwalk is the best example of that. The lyrics here are so inspiring. The song is fantastic. The gameplay is fun. The art is beautiful. And I absolutely love it. Nightwalk is perfect. After Remix 7, you don't get new games, but you instead get sequels to the older games, which have revamped music, new challenges, sometimes new mechanics, and they're all really fun. The very first one, though, is Samurai Slice 2. Like I said earlier, this one is just the far better version of Samurai Slice. The music is a lot more fast, the tempo is really fun, the rhythm feels really good to get into, the gameplay is super satisfying, everything about this one just feels great. So I'm going to give Samurai Slice 2 a superb. After that we have Working Doe 2, and while I'm really fond of the bunnies in the background, I like the music here a lot more, this one again just kind of feels like the first one again. The gameplay here isn't too different, the tempo change doesn't really affect my opinion that much, and overall, I just don't really ever want to go back and play it that much, so I'm gonna give Working Doe 2 just okay. Next up, there's Built to Scale 2. This one is pretty much the same thing as the original. Not a whole lot of changes here. Very unimpressed with Built to Scale 2, just okay. And now we have Double Date 2, and this one is really weird for me because I love the music, I love the art, I love the setting, but there's something about this that just feels inferior to the first one. Maybe it's because it's just the same song again with a little bit of a, with some, some more balls thrown in there every now and then, but this one is a rare case of me never wanting to play the sequel after perfecting it. I would much rather go back and play the first Double Date. So Double Date 2 gets a just okay. Next up we have Remix 8. And this one is super solid. I love the music. I love the photograph theme. And I love that it incorporates games that were not from this column. That's really fun. This song gets stuck in my head constantly. I really love it. I love the photo tacked onto the wall. That's a ton of fun. That's great. It, make, it changes up the gameplay just a little bit to make it interesting. Super cool. Super unique. Love Remix 8. This one is the superb. Fuck Love Rap 2. Shadow Dimension. <laughs> Cheer Readers 2 is a lot of fun in my opinion. This is definitely the better version of Cheer Readers. I like the music a lot. I like the gameplay a lot. This one is a ton of fun. It's really fast and it mixes in a few more things here and there. And it feels really satisfying for all the same reasons that I said about Cheer Readers 1. But if I'm going to go back and play one of them, I'm probably going to play the sequel. So I'm going to give Cheer Readers 2 a superb. And next up we have Hole in One 2. I really like this game. It's very fun, it's very satisfying. However, it just doesn't have that same satisfaction that the first one has, but it's still a very solid game and I absolutely love playing Hole in One 2. While 9 times out of 10 I'm gonna play Hole in One 2 over Hole in One, there's just something so satisfying about Hole in One and it being the very first game that makes that one just a little bit better. So Hole in One 2 gets a superb. Next up we have Screwbot Factory 2, and I absolutely love this game. This one is so much fun. 
I really love how it changes up the tempo. The song is really fun and different. I love how it affects the lighting. It makes things different, so you have to rely on the audio cues, not just the visuals. It works super well, and I really enjoy this one. Screwbot Factory 2 gets a superb. And now we have Remix 9. And in my opinion, Remix 9 is one of the best in the entire game. I love Remix 9. I love the themes, I love the art direction a lot. As much shit as I've given on Love Rap, this song does Love Rap really well, and I love the look for MC Adore. If you haven't noticed, my icon has been MC Adore from Remix 9 for as long as I can remember. I really love the design here, I love the colors, I already said the art design, but the music here is some of the best. I love it. I love how it incorporates so many different games into the gameplay. It is just amazing. One of the best in the entire franchise. Remix 9 is perfect. Alright, final column. My camera's running out of battery, so let's power through this. Figure Fighter 2 is a whole lot better than the first one. It's a lot more fast, it's a lot more cinematic. I love how it starts with pure black and you only hear the narrator. It throws you off, but in the best way possible. Tons of fun, super satisfying. Figure Fighter 2 is superb. Micro Row 2 is the only sequel game that makes you practice beforehand because of the new mechanics it introduces. And in my opinion, this is the definitive version of Micro Row. The new mechanics that it adds are a ton of fun, it makes the gameplay a whole lot more satisfying and intuitive, I love the music, I love the design here, Micro Row 2 is superb. Packing Pests 2 kind of has the same problems as the original, it's kind of boring, not really too much going on, and the music here is just not that great, so just okay. Finally we have Karate Man 2. Karate Man 2 takes what Karate Man 1 did and amps it up by 10. The music here is so much better. The gameplay is really fun and it's surprising. What you're normally used to in the first one is hit 3, but this game throws hit 4s at you out of nowhere, which is really fun and exciting and I love when it comes up. It's just, it's great. I love the, the rhythm that you get into at the very end. It is so much fun. This is the best Karate Man game that Rhythm Heaven has ever done. Karate Man 2 is perfect. Alright, this is the last game that we are going to rank. Remix 10. Remix 10 is really great. I love how every single game is incorporated here. I really don't think there is anything about this remix that I would change. I love how everything transitions into each other, the flow is fantastic, the music is great considering they're working with what, like 35 different games here almost? 30 games? Like the considering that they made that work is amazing. I love it. I could do this game with my eyes closed because I've played it so many times. The music is just so much fun. I really, really love it. So Remix 10 is also perfect. Whew, alright, that was a lot. We're not going to talk about anything else. We're not going to talk about the bonus games, the endless games, the rhythm toys, anything else. But I had a ton of fun doing this. I really love Rhythm Heaven Fever. The whole franchise is great too, but this game will forever hold a very, very special place in my heart. And I really hope that I could encourage somebody to check the game out for themselves. The feeling I get when I played Rhythm Heaven Fever is just unlike anything else. I really hope that Nintendo can continue this franchise down the line, but right now it kind of seems like it's dead. And that makes me so sad, but I just want a new Rhythm Heaven game so badly. Even if it's just a re-release of Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix on the Switch, that would be so great. But if possible, I would absolutely love a new entry in the franchise. It could work so, so well. Oh yeah, and put Rhythm Heaven in Smash, you cowards. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking all the way through to the end. I'm sure this video is going to be like 30 minutes long, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.